Welcome back to Extra Time. I'm Greg Lawless alongside Shep Messing and Jason, the producer. Act 3, Friday Night Lights. It's a special end of the week episode, if you will, of MLS. It's Dallas at Real Salt Lake. This gives uh, Real Salt Lake a chance to bounce back after last week's pretty poor loss to Columbus. I mean, it, it yeah. wasn't very good. They need I, to get I going. I think they lost to Columbus's reserve team, <laughs> missing <laughs> missing their four best players. That's not really a game you want to To be fair, there are plenty of teams in this league that could lose to Columbus's reserve team. That's fair. Right? I, so I think the pressure's on Salt Lake, though. Oh, yeah. I, I really do. After the kind of year they had last season, They've been inconsistent this year. Yes. Playing at home, I think there's a sense of frustration by the crowd, by the fans. They want better results, and Salt Lake needs a win in this game. They haven't really had that rhythm. I mean, Morales hasn't been the player we expected him to be. Kyle Beckerman's been off of the national team sometimes. That's what's They've hurt them, I think. Kyle losing Beckerman. Beckerman. Yeah, losing Beckerman. And Johnson. Ryan really Johnson's been off with, with Canada. Will Johnson. Well. Will Johnson, sorry. And Mosissian. Yeah. I mean, his woes scoring goals early right. in the year. And so. then his desire to leave. Yeah. There's lots of things going on. Is there pressure on Jason Christ? I, I think you want to go, you know, especially having the All-Star game at your stadium mm -hmm. with all the attention in, in your area, you kind of want to go into that with a win. You don't want right. to have to be answering questions when people are coming around about, you know, the struggles you're having. Well, two months ago, we would have said Dallas is coming to town. That's great. <laughs> this is a different Dallas team now. They, they're they a little bit better. They're playing better than they did earlier on the season. They're also coming off of a bye week, which is certainly something that helps them as they go to the high altitude there. Is this a game that Dallas could sneak a win out of? Yeah, I think Dallas has played well, and I think the key ingredient for them, uh, they have there with, Ke with Kenny Cooper gone, they have Jeff Cunningham up top, and guess what? He's playing against his old team. You, uh, you could almost say only, that every week. Not right? That's true, but a team that he scored 16 goals and 11 assists for, so maybe you, know, you get the Cunningham of 2006 to show up in this game. The biggest game of the weekend, though, probably in terms of the ramifications for both conferences, is Chicago. Chicago at Seattle. Number one in the East, the Chicago Fire versus number two in the West, Seattle Sounders. This is, this is going to be a classy game when you look at the two teams on the field. Chicago's missing Brian McBride, but they are still the best team on the road, without a By doubt. Far, they score a yeah. ton of goals on the road as well. Seattle arg arguably has the best home field advantage in the league. How's this one going to play out? Yeah, well, first of all, Seattle is ridiculous. I mean, the story mm. just gets better and better. You know, last week, the friendly against Chelsea, over 65,000 uh, people. It was great, wasn't it? Yeah. Unbelievable. And, and the Sounders themselves, they didn't look overmatched at all. They, they played, played well. They got out and did there were times where I thought Chelsea was worried. I mean, Seattle yeah. carried the play for good portions of that game. Yeah. So, yes, back to the Chicago game. I, I think Chicago has shown they are tremendous on the road, but... I favor Seattle in the game. Hmm. I really think that with the crowd behind them, they're going to attack Chicago. They're going to try and get at that back line, get some service into the box, and, and as long as they are attacking Chicago, I think they'll do well. And I, Chicago's missing Brian McBride, and that hurts too. I, you know, part of me thinks that that Chicago might actually be better off without McBride on uh -oh. this field. Ooh, uh -oh. I'm just saying it's a faster Ooh. field. They're going to put out speed with Nyako and Rolf up top. They're going to be, like you said, Seattle's going to be coming out them. They're going to be counterattacking. And while in the counterattack, you want McBride to hold up the ball and lay it mm -hmm. off, you have mm -hmm. Blanco sitting up there who can very easily hold up the ball and lay it off to the speedier forwards. I think, I'm not saying Chicago is going to win this game, but they're not in as bad shape as you think. It's a good point. And the other thing is to remember that whenever there's a big crowd and Blanco's on the field, he picks it up. Yeah, He's Bri a big Bri crowd player. Brian McBride, that was Jason, the producer, <laughs> who said that. <laughs> that they're better without the him. Chicago I said they wouldn't be yeah. hurt. They right. wouldn't be hurt as much as you think. Well, one of the best rivalries that's starting to build in MLS is Toronto and Columbus. And those two teams will meet at Crew Stadium this weekend. It's a weird rivalry. The Trillion Cup. It has nothing to do with the number trillion. We know that. Uh, and it's basically created by the fans, I think. The fans traveling down from Toronto to Columbus. And uh, this game now has some really good meat to it. Because Toronto's doing very well near the top. Columbus near the top. But no Guillermo Barrosquelotto for the crew. It's a good chance here for Toronto to get a win, right? Oh, I fully agree. I, I think Tor Toronto now, this is a chance that they have to take, essentially it's one of those six-point games, as you yeah. said. If you can take three points on the road from a team that you're stuck in the standings with, getting players like Ali Garba, supposedly O'Brien Does Garba White, start? I think you got to start yeah, I think so. I, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Playing well I don't want to bash cup. Chad Barrett every week. I just think that you want consistency. You want consistency. You want a guy who you 
trust to put the ball in the back of the net when it's laying at his feet at the six. Right. And I don't know that you have that trust with Chad Barrett after the you know after the season he's having. You know, for me, it should be a great game, and I always like to go against whatever the the public reaction is. Right. Mm. Immediately, we think this is a great chance for Toronto because Scalotto, he's the man, right. orchestrates everything. What's Columbus going to do with that? But Columbus is also missing Chad Marshall in the back. That's yeah. a big concern. Robbie, Robbie Rogers, Rogers yeah. also not there. I, I, I just think with their crowd and and mm. motivation for these players to step in and get the job done, they did it last week with basically a reserve team. Uh, I think it'll be a great game. Right. And everything tells me Toronto, so I'm going Columbus. It, it's fair. It's uh, you have to give the crew credit. They have a lot of depth. Yes. So you know when we say a reserve team, and they, they still had seven use. starters out, out on mm-hmm. the field. But the guys who step in can contribute. You, right. know, you look at Stephen Leonard. Right. He looked. He didn't exactly. look out of place at all out there for Alejandro Moreno. Another player that has shown that he can integrate into his team very quickly. The great David Beckham, the Los Angeles Galaxy midfielder, came back last week and did well. It's the second league game for Beckham back with the Galaxy against Kansas City this weekend on Saturday night. Beckham wasn't fantastic against New York, but he did fine, and the team won. And then in the 2-2 draw with AC Milan, he looked really, really good, and he got booed, but he still came out flying. Now it goes to Kansas City in that strange baseball diamond that they're playing on out there. What happens in this game, Jason? Uh, I think he gets booed again. (laughs) I would (laughs) imagine. But I think... Now that he's playing, you know, with Landon, getting a couple more games under, like Landon said, they think the same. He he knows where I'm going mm-hmm. when I make a run, and he can deliver the ball. That's going to help them, especially on a field in Kansas City, which is a little smaller. So you need to make those passes a little bit crisper. They need, you know. Well, Kansas City, they've been sort of up and down. This is a big chance for them to on national TV. It's on ESPN two to come out and maybe show that they're still in it. You know, we've talked about Los Angeles winning four games in a row, but you always imagine this could also be a trap game. They could come into Kansas City and lose 4-0, despite Kansas City not having Davey Arnault or Jimmy Conrad. Yeah, I think it's very difficult, but anything can happen. Quick comment on Beckham, because for me, forget all the nonsense off the field, uh, the booing, the crowd reaction. The guy is an unbelievable player, and he's the perfect player But you can't forget that, because in some ways, this is what he's always about. When the adversity's there, he rises to the occasion every single time. Good point. And and when it comes to soccer, this guy is an unbelievable asset. Perfect player, perfect time for the LA Galaxy. How does Kansas City deal with it? I really don't know, <laughs> because Conrad, right. without right. Conrad and Davey Arno, I mean, that's, the for me, the backbone of that team. Here, when when Landon Donovan and Edson Buttle and Aleko Eskandari and David Beckham look, look out there and they see McKenzie and Watson and... Beasler. Uh, Beasler, right. yeah, and Holbein. Holbein. No offense to them. They're, they're good enough. But that, that's not the best line that they're going to see this season. Boy, I hope you don't have to play a scrimmage against Kansas City because <laughs> Holbein will come right uh, through you in the back. Listen, and that's the hey, way. Let that be inspiration. That's, that's fine. But that's that's how Kansas City can, can do well in this game. They have to come out with a mentality it, that we have to play 90 minutes hard. Right. Pressure the ball. Be smart. Let's defend first with pressure, and let's see if we can create some goals ourselves. That game is on ESPN2 at 9 p.m. on Saturday night, Los Angeles at Kansas City. And David Beckham is not going to be an all-star. We've talked about that before, and uh, rightly so. He's only played one game in the league. However, the three of us are going to be in Utah for the all-star game. Next uh, Wednesday, they're playing Everton FC in the all-star game. 90-minute pregame show from 8 p.m. Eastern Time to 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. The three of us will be live here on MLSNet.com. Have some interviews. We're going to break down the two teams. We're going to break down the players on both teams. Look at behind the scenes in it. And uh, I'm sure, Jason, you'll be Twittering from the side of the field, right? Sure. I'll actually keep you up to date on Twitter, too, about our plans for next Wednesday. Jason E.T. Producer. And also be sure to send some emails, because we're going to definitely try and answer some emails. Then the address is extratime at mlsnet.com. So join us next week, Wednesday, live, 8 p.m. Eastern, here on mlsnet.com, and we'll kick it around.